Hey everyone, we have our friend Justin Clark from Indy. Yep. Um, thanks for coming out. No problem at all. My Justin pleasure. has a beautiful GSXR 1000R. If you want to check it out. And Justin, what all do you have done to it? Obviously, you've got the spark exhaust with the uh, little Moto GP can. I think they call it. Uh, what else has been done? Uh, it just has a Sprint POA air filter, the smog block off, uh, the servo valve has been removed, and then it has a flash and tune by Carnes Performance on Pennsylvania. Okay. Um, and no power commander? Is it straight? Nope, straight, straight from fuel the ECU. Tune yep. ECU. Okay. Um, well, why are we here? Uh, see what it puts down. We got a dyno when it got uh, broken initially from the dealer. And then it got flash and tuned out in Pennsylvania and put on some numbers there and nice. just kind of see what Sort of do a there. comparison? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, this will be interesting. Spark makes some great stuff. You know the Sprint filter is, is a good, uh, it's a good filter and Carnes has a great performance, so, yep. or performance record. So yeah. um, let's just see what it does. Perfect. And this is just how you, uh, just how you roll the bike off the trailer. Um, yeah. We got, it, we got it strapped in. What kind of fuel? Uh, I put Shell Pump 93 in it. The correction factors are the same, mm -hmm. 1.03 to 1.03, and um, that's where we are. Questions? Not really. Okay. Just a good um, comparison. Yeah, I think so. I mean, he was here. Today's the eighth. He was here on the fourth. Okay. He said same conditions. We put. Check Zill up here, but we're in the middle of making some changes. You saw no, she's either. sort of torn up right now. <laughs> but this is just you know customer bike to customer bike. Right. Same same correction factor, same scale, same everything, same gear. From the looks of it, you two have the same gearing. You have stock gearing. Yeah. 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 Stock gearing to stock gearing. So, what was the purpose of this exercise? Um, Justin wanted to know what his bike made. Right. It had been on another dyno previously. In different conditions, what did it make? Two oh what? Uh, made two oh five uh, back in March, where there was no humidity. I think temperature was about forty degrees. On pump gas on uh, ninety three shell pump. Okay, gas. so same basically exact. the same setup. Exact same setup. Um, so what we have here is in our dyno room, which we draw from our warehouse. So temperature doesn't really affect us that much. We keep pretty consistent. Humidity does. Uh, humidity on a bike like this is going to be, you know, it's going to be significant. You're you're at 55%. It's not like it's terrible. It's not like our air is terrible right now, right. but it's not good. It's definitely been better. Hell, a couple days ago, it yeah. was better, right? Um, but that gives you that gives you guys a good idea. 
playing the dino game can get a little convoluted and a little confusing. Which one's right? Is the other dino right? Is he making 204? Or is our dino right? He's making 183. Um, all that really matters is, is that when you're, when you're in the, on that dyno and in that room, you, you tune for the, you know, the conditions, you tune for what's going on. And uh, if you take, we could take this bike right now to somebody's dyno I know, and it would make 210. So right. I've also got another guy that it probably wouldn't get out of the 160s. Right. So it gets really confusing. All that really matters is your bike fast? Yeah. Super fast. Yeah, fast. <laughs> um, and you like it? I love it. Sounds good. Rowdy sounded. Definitely got that race bike sound. So, um, you know, dyno numbers are what they are. Uh, Justin, thank you. No problem. Really appreciate, appreciate you coming out and letting us play with the cool bike. Appreciate it. So we were just discussing Justin's 183.87 peak. Um, do you have the correction factor? I mean, you have the correction factor. Do you have yes. the conditions also? Uh, I do not have the conditions right. with me, but so, yeah, I know humidity was very low. When his bike was dynoed previously, we used the Society of Automotive Engineering scale, which reads a little bit lower. We're going to go ahead and switch over to the scale he was on, STD, which is a scale that really isn't used anymore, um, the STD scale. But you can see he jumped from 183 to 187 horsepower on the STD scale, which <laughs> my friend Big Carl, God rest his soul, used to call this the happy dick scale. <laughs> That's why we don't use it. We use SAE. We used to use it because when was the last time a customer said, okay, Justin, I'm going to print you out a dyno chart. Okay. Do you want the low numbers or the high? Everybody wants the high numbers. Everybody wants the high numbers. So um, take all this for what it's worth. Um, the bike didn't get any faster. All we did was change the scaling. So that's the most that this bike will see on this dyno in this configuration. So hope that clears some things up for you guys. Hi. But Brock, the runs don't count if they're not same day. We preach it. We say it. We're going to do it. Follow me. Okay, guys. So when Justin was here, we didn't put the GSX-R Jigzilla up on the dyno with his bike because I was in the middle of a tuning session on another bike that was time critical. And then also, Jigzilla unfortunately sits here as a dyno mule while engineering figures cool stuff out that makes your bike run better. Um, Will it start? I think it'll start. I bet it turns over very slowly because it's constantly being used as a poor guinea pig. ECU. Can't just turn on the quick shift. Now remember, they said Einstein couldn't count change at the grocery store. I'll bet if we use one of our flash ECUs instead of the stock one, we can turn the quick shifter on this standard model GSX-R1000 that wasn't originally equipped with a quick shifter. Oh, this ought to be fun. All right, so you can't be in either one of these modes. If you're in traction control mode or if you're, you're in your SDMS, it will not work. So now you hold down on this for two seconds, puts us into display mode. We go down to quick shifter set. Then we push that same. And you can see there's a little arrow pointing this way that matches this. Hold that for two seconds. Mode two, if we want to change the mode, Now we've turned it off. Now we've turned it to mode one. If you want to run the quick shifter, you, want, you select mode two and then it says exit and it points this way. That's this button. Two seconds. One, two, done. 
That's the way all of these settings on the dashboard work. I know it's not the most intuitive thing in the world, but it also keeps you from messing stuff up while you're riding. You actually have to sort of think about it. So anyway, now that we have a flash Jigzilla that functions correctly, we're gonna go put it on the dyno. Hold on. What time did Justin leave? I'd say about 11. 1130. It's 3.30 now. We just had a thunderstorm, so it's humid as can be. Um, so I'm sure we're going to be in almost the same conditions as him, if not a little bit worse. All right. Through the maze. So it's hot, <laughs> we just strapped the bike up there. It has old pump gas, it has whatever maps in that ECU. It's just, it's just how it usually stays. I don't think I was doing any MR12 testing with it previously. I know I wasn't in the tank. Um, but, so it's pump gas, just how I tested it last time, and now in these same conditions. So we'll see what she does. Okay guys, let me show you what we've got here. Well, before you do that, um, we pulled the bike up. I really didn't know what it had, so we just tested it how we tested it. From the appearance of it, we checked the power commander. There wasn't any map in it, and my past notes say that we had a fuel tune, so it was really similar to the way Justin's bike was set up. Um, our conditions, we've got a little bit more humidity, but the correction factor is still 1.03. And if you come over here and look, much closer, the humidity's hurting this bike worse than I thought it would, especially on pump gas. Um, and you can see the peak, 187.86 versus 183.87 on the SAE scale. Um, I do want you to look at the difference up the front of the curve. Peak power is great, but average power is what accelerates the bike. And then if we pick time, You'll notice that the curves look very similar, but our bike um, hits, hits Redline, which is OEM Redline. I'm sure his is also. Um, oh, geez, it's quite a bit, it's quite a bit sooner, about eight-tenths of a second, which in the real world should give this bike a pretty distinct advantage. Reason we aren't in the real world. Um, the clutch on this bike is not suited for drag racing. It's great for road racing. But as soon as we get the clutch sorted, um, we'll be out on the drag strip and we'll be able to put these numbers down into numbers that we that we all understand. Quarter mile times have been around for a long time, whatever, 60 years. So um, until next time, I'm Brock Davidson. I'll see you then.